everyone, and welcome to Apollo 4X. My name is Joe Young, and today we're going to be talking about the politics of Apollo 4X. In the top left side, these are the decision-making powers that you have at your disposal. Whenever you want to deal with the politics of Apollo 4X, you click on these tabs. At the bottom left corner are your resources. These are the political tools you have at your disposal. At the bottom right corner is your services. These represent what you can purchase on the market at such a time. Now at the bottom left corner we have three resources to keep track of. Your money, which is represents how much capital you have at your disposal. Your clout, which represents your political pull and influence over others. And your approval rating, which represents how well you are liked or hated. The first resource is to, is to be used to purchase services on the market, which we have a free market in Apollo 4X. It is not a command economy. The second one is your clout. Now this represents your ability to request favors. Most of the time it's used to make decisions in Apollo 4X, but sometimes it could be used to call powerful nations at your disposal to decide what you want. The third is your approval rating. Every turn you have to make decisions to stay in office. Now, if your approval rating goes to zero or below, you are elected out of office. However, if your approval rating is high, you can recruit city-states or republics into your coalition, which give you access to new and powerful abilities throughout the game. Some city-states may, for instance, allow you to build shipyards on other planets, while other city-states may allow you to recruit special forces in combat. It, depending upon what city-state you want, gives you the certain benefits of each. In the right corner, you have services. There are five services in the game. The first service allows you to improve the market. As you improve the market, you get better deals throughout the game, but it gets more and more expensive to upgrade that market. The second one is for expansion. This allows me to colonize new planets at will, such as this, and voila, I can colonize planets. Now, keep in mind though, that a planet is actually extremely useless unless you set up the infrastructure of the planet, which is right here. So I'm gonna put in a little city right here. I'm gonna put one city here and uh, one city here. So as you can see, it won't matter anyway, because if your planets don't have cities, then you can't really develop them, because you won't have the fleet to actually get there. So you need to build the roads before you can get the money. The third is space labor, which is used not only to be fleet for Apollo, because Apollo has its own fleet, it is also used to travel to distant objects like Eldarian fleets, and it is used to invade enemy planets, such as the centaurs over here, uh, which are actually very close to the planet Quantum. Finally, you have weapons, which are used to train troops. As you can see here, I can train a troop. It costs 15 to train each type of regiment. Each regiment is equivalent and equal, but it depends on how well you wield them. So. Although the Science and Shield Regiment may not actually be stronger than the Missile Recon Regiment, depending on how they're used determines their effectiveness. You get to decide what the forces of your composition are. Now, to end turn in Apollo 4X, I have to make political decisions. As you can see here, if I end turn, I first have to make decisions. There are four decisions that, are, uh, that I can make each turn, and each one has a little fluff text to explain what exactly you're doing for the specific politics of Apollo 4X. When I want to make a decision, I buy resources to make sure that I could do it, and then I make sure I have enough clout to do so as well. So for instance, I have 20 clout to use, so I'll probably make this decision, I'll make that decision, and I'll make that decision. Now, here's the most important thing. For every decision I make, my approval goes up by one. For every decision I fail to make, my approval rating goes down by one. I have made three decisions and I have not made one decision. So my approval rating is actually going to is actually only going to increase by two. As you can see right here, my approval rating has gone up by two. So after I make decisions, I can recruit city states, which allow me to have access to powerful new abilities. For instance, if I recruited the living communes, it costs ten approval. This comes up, which shows a domestic agenda, but we'll ignore that for a second. I now have access to this city-state's powers. So, I have recruited a nation of eco-environmentalists, and I now have access to environmentalist powers. For instance, if I wanted to supercharge this planet, I can hit this button, preserve the planet, 
and now it's become an ecotopia. But I can't build any more. However, I got four, three, I got three free cities out of it, which is excellent. And you can see the trees that are growing in it to show the the environmental presence that this city state would do. Now, notice how you see right here. I only have one cloud. I can't do this anymore. So, for instance, I can't explore this planet because I do not have enough clout. So, since my clout is too low, I have to be careful how I wield it. So, I can't rely on these awesome powers all the time. I have to be very careful. So, I'm going to end my turn here. Okay? It's the start of a new turn. Now, let's say I was being completely neglectful and I opened up the thing, right? As you can see right here, I have more decisions. The more planets I colonize, the more decisions I have to make. Suppose, for instance, I said, you know what, I'm a lame duck president, I'm not even going to bother with this, okay? So there are six decisions to be made, I refuse to make any decisions, my approval rating goes down by six. Because I didn't make any of the decisions, people are upset that I'm not solving the problems as what they would expect of me to do if I was responsible for governing the planet. Finally, let's talk about clout. Now, in order to gain clout, you have to do domestic agendas, which are effectively side quests to the game. You can advance any side quest you want. You could sometimes do one. You could sometimes do the other. It's up to you. You're the ch you're in charge. You get to decide how you want to do it. The first one is unify the republic, which basically means if I recruit more of these nations to my republic, then I advance this agenda. The second one is conquer the centaurs, which means. I have to kill enemy units. If I kill enough enemy units, my this domestic agenda increases. The third is weave the stellar net. Now, on planets, instead of adding fleet, I can do other stuff too. For instance, I can improve the corporations on the planet, but ignore that for a second, I could add a stellar net. When I add the stellar net, I am effectively building a intergalactic internet. And with this intergalactic internet, people can talk with each other. And so as I weave the stellar net together, I begin advancing this agenda. The third thing I can do is grow the Vault of Apollo. Now this is a cool mechanic. If I have spare money waiting around and I want to make more of a long-term investment, I can put money in the Apo uh, Vault of Apollo. When I do so, I am actually using the money as a reserve currency and as an investment. So that way I can slowly get capital per turn. It doesn't pay off initially, but over a longer period of time can provide a guaranteed income. To conclude with everything, keeping an eye on politics is how you manage to stay in power by, you know, by successfully manipulating it. The most important thing to understand though is you have to keep an eye on your clout and your approval. Like I said, clout is effectively mana. It's the special it's the special resource that allows you to do awesome powers. So for instance, with some clout, I can explore this planet and now I can actually colonize it because I recruited the city state and I'm going to do this. And I'm going to expand and I now have it. So with clout, I have access to uh, power. However, in order to increase the amount of clout, I have to solve the domestic agendas that people want me to solve. So, and if I fail to do so, then I'm in trouble. One final domestic agenda is a lie with the ancients. This is a cool one. If I trade with aliens, such as this right here, this also activates a domestic agenda. And this fifth domestic agenda is based on me encountering a different alien race besides the centaurs. To wrap up, there are five domestic agendas. Accomplishing all five domestic agendas increases the amount of clout you get per turn. The clout is used to uh, have used special powers that you get from city-states. And your approval rating is how you recruit different nations, such as uh, the, uh, an industrial powerhouse nation, uh, a nation of military officers, a nation of economists. We, we have in total 13 nations that we're going to implement. Some of the ones we have yet to implement include a nation of pirates, a nation of organized crime, a nation of crazy scientists. So as you recruit them, you get access to that trope and those abilities that come with it. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Joe Young, and this is Apollo 4X.